Okay, my name is Dave Campbell, um, certified organic farmer. Got involved in organics with my father in 67. We've been on this farm since 1988. Uh, small grains and hay, we had dairied uh, prior to that time. I, I farm organically because I grew up with it. I, uh, my father switched over in 1967, and since I grew up with it, uh, I believe in it. I think that when you look at all of society's problems and that, I think organic farming does address a lot of those problems in a positive way. I really couldn't farm that way. I'm very much against using herbicides and using uh, commercial fertilizers that really don't add a whole lot of nutrition to the plant. A relationship with weeds, interesting question. I've never been asked that one before. <laughs> well, maybe the first thing that comes to my mind is love-hate. <laughs> Uh, maybe, maybe love is not quite true either. Um, weeds, actually we, learn, we do learn a lot from weeds. We learn what is sometimes is wrong, uh, what we need to take care of in the soils. Uh, but as far as the weeds go, uh, different types of my, or different areas of my farm have different uh, weed pressures in that. Uh, it's hard to believe, but just a matter of 40 acres away in another field, I'll have different weed pressures than I will another part of the farm. And so I look at weeds, try to observe what kind of weeds I have and, and what the issue is, why I'm having these weeds, and try to address that issue. My biggest concern when I see weeds is how am I going to manage that weed uh, in order so that it does not affect uh, much, or if any, crop loss. In other words, I can live with a few weeds especially if it's like say soybeans that are sold for feed grade, uh, then I question is it worth it to go out to do that third cultivation when it may not be necessary but typically I do that third cultivation uh, just because the weeds get away you've got the weed seeds there in the seed bank for for decades. Okay as far as factors go with weed management strategies there's again a whole number of things I'll look at um, Obviously, cost is one of them. Uh, what can I afford to spend as far as hand labor goes, as far as you know, cutting the weeds you know, in the crop? Uh, what, uh, if I want to do any changes to my cultivation techniques and that, or maybe timeliness of cultivation? Uh, you know, the crop itself, am I going to raise a feed uh, crop where the weeds are not quite the issue, especially if I'm going to have some weeds out there that might stain the soybeans. Uh, that's not an issue, but with food grade soybeans it is an issue. I've been raising food grade crops for a few years now, that is uh, winter wheat and soybeans and corn. And so with food grade of course, it, weed control is a bigger issue typically. If I see weeds come up in my wheat, and the wheat is about ready for harvest and that, that's not a problem at all because I'm going to be coming back through after wheat harvest with my hay bind and cutting everything that's there about two inches above the ground. And so as long as the wheat doesn't go to seed and doesn't interfere with the yield or growth of the crop, then it's not a problem. Uh, in crops like corn and soybeans, then uh, there again, if, if the crop is ahead of the weed you know, by quite a bit, and that it's not really a problem, except if the weed seed is viable that year, then there'll be weed seed in the ground for, um, for decades to come. So then that is an issue for future years. The overall approach to weeds is probably going to start the summer or fall before uh, the, the crop year. And I'll be looking at what types of cover crops to plant. Um, I'll be looking at thinking about uh, what type of seed I want to get the following year because I'll be ordering seed probably late fall, early winter. Uh, I'll be looking at tillage, what kind of tillage I want to do. Do I chisel plow that field in the fall or do I spring mold bore plow that field? Um, and just general things like, like that. Uh, uh, like I say, the whole process actually starts pretty much in the summer. Even this year, I'll be looking at weeds and seeing what are the biggest weed issues this year so that next year I can give a little more thought to those specific weeds. The Canada thistle approach is just, is a totally different approach than the, and than the annual weeds. Uh, Canada thistle uh, will do things like mowing around the farm before the, thistles, uh, before the thistle seed will start to fly in the summertime. So we'll try to manage 
uh, around the farm as much as we can so they aren't spreading to another spot in the, in the, on the farm. Uh, and then once we got them here, then of course we have the thistles that are already here. And so then we'll try to do what we can tillage-wise, but there's only so much you can do tillage-wise. Uh, also, one thing that has worked well, uh, I was involved in a research project with sorghum Sudan grass and we actually took a field out of production for a year, which is costly because there's no income and you still have expenses with tillage and with uh, seed cost. But uh, we had uh, fantastic success with controlling thistles uh, with the Sudan grasses planted, with the exception of the edge of the field, uh, maybe about five to 10 feet away from the edge of the field where the thistles had sunlight uh, to, to thrive. But other than that, uh, it did a very good job and next year I'll be taking land out of production uh, that will be going into wheat and taking that out of wheat and into Sudan grass to hopefully cut back the thistles for, for many years. Uh, targeting management, uh, other than the can of thistle, the annuals would be jimson weed. Uh, jimson weed uh, can be a nasty weed. We work on that one uh, specifically. While a sunflower we have and that one is another one that uh, can really be difficult on drawing moisture out of the soil. It's such a large plant. So I would say gypsum weed and uh, sunflower are probably the two annual weeds that we probably focus on a little bit more. Okay, managing those actually is uh, not a whole lot different than the other annual weeds. Uh, although when we're cutting the weeds out of the field, even if they're small, we will cut those. We may not cut sometimes the other ones. And so we just don't want to see any of those on our farm. If there's anything that's changed, more emphasis on variety selection for uh, my crops is to knowing uh, what I can get away with as far as my corn varieties go, as far as uh, can I go out to 106 day corn or do I go down to 99 day corn? Uh, knowing that I've got advantages and disadvantages with both. And knowing what fields and what I can get away with as far as weeds and that too. And, and what I can uh, plant earlier and what I plant later. For instance, if I plant corn, um, I'm going to plant a corn that's probably a 102 day variety or even less than that. I've planted 99 day corn before that has done well. Um, I want to plant something that I can wait a little bit later, especially with corn and soybeans. It's not that way with small grains, but with corn and soybeans, I want to plant a little bit later because I know that, especially these soils around here, tech, you know, typically tend to be cold and wet. And uh, if I get in too early, the weeds are going to grow, but the plant's not going to grow too well. And that's pretty much common for, for all farmers. But uh, so, yeah, I want to delay planting a little bit uh, so that I can get a, a better advantage to the crop coming up, you know, versus the weeds. The best lesson I've learned from managing weed. Boy, get write a book on that one. Um, I would say know what you can live with and what you can't live with and probably timeliness. If you're going to manage that weed, be thinking about it uh, way ahead of time, maybe the previous winter, on what you're going to use to control that weed, whether it be mechanical uh, means, or just maybe hand weeding, or even uh, different ideas on different crops. Uh, this year has been very challenging, and what keeps me going, some days I wonder, <laughs> honestly. Uh, what keeps me going is, is my belief in it, and um, this is what I've done for many years. Um, I just believe in the concept of organic, sustainable ag, and uh, I would not farm any other way. And so if I farm, I'm going to farm this way.